thank you. Uh, just a few words of introduction. Uh, this talk was to be given by my colleague, Rob Granger. But unfortunately, he was subject to one of those random events. He was attacked and he was knocked unconscious. And uh, he's, he's, he's okay now, he, he, he's well, but he couldn't make it to the conference, right? So I'm here to give the talk in his place. He says he, he feels perfectly well, he just he says he looks like a bus hit him, which, uh, which doesn't sound too good, but uh, he, he'd be okay. So one issue we have here is that this, it's me talking and it's Rob's slides. So you'll forgive me if occasionally we get out of synchronism with one another. All right, well, I'll do my best to do justice to, to Rob's slides. Okay, the talk is three parts, motivation and results, then the method we used, and finally some applications for our result. Okay, here's the starting point. Consider uh, basically an extension field, right, and the, the properties thereof, right? Now, of course, when we do cryptography, we're interested in fields, we're interested in, in, uh, in prime order groups within fields, and in that setting, we can do a lot of crypto. Uh, of course, we're particularly interested in doing the crypto efficiently. So in uh, the, the multiplicative uh, field setting, we're interested in fast exponentiation. And in the additive field uh, uh, nomenclature of elliptic curves, we're interested in fast doubling and adding. And uh, I guess we're particularly interested or might be curious about uh, uh, places where uh, squaring is, is particularly fast because the classic squaring and multiply algorithm or double and add algorithm, the, the time critical, uh, the bottleneck operation there is the doubling or the squaring, right? Because the adding and multiplication, we can use windowing methods and we can, uh, we can uh, reduce its uh, overall significance. So we're particularly interested in groups where doubling is fast or where squaring is fast, right? An example would be uh, super singular elliptic curves of characteristic two. Right, where doubling is almost for free. Right, of course, super singular uh, elliptic curves are characteristic too. Uh, there's, a, there's a problem with them. They feel the famous MOV condition, so cryptographers got rid of them and said, don't use them. Right, then, of course, pairings were discovered, and cryptographers said, ah, these are actually ideal. Come back and use them again. And they, the, the fast doubling uh, uh, behavior uh, in, in, in these kind of groups is particularly useful. It means that we can implement things particularly efficiently. For example, we have the E to T pairing, which is based on earlier work by Dursman and Lee, which very much exploits the fact that point doubling is very, very efficient compared to point addition. Right? But anyway, coming back to the, the, the multiplicative setting and, and the field we're considering here, uh, we might also be particularly interested in settings where squaring is particularly fast, right? because then a square and multiply algorithm will be particularly efficient. Right, so let's look at a generator, uh, and let's look at the problem on the consideration, the problem of squaring that element. Right, well, let's first of all assume that our element alpha uh, it belongs to a proper subgroup of the, of the full field. Right, and of course, the, uh, the number of elements in uh, the extension field is for q to the n is q to the n minus 1. And q to the n minus 1, of course, has a well-known factorization into cyclotomic polynomials. Right, so we use the notation phi subscript d to indicate the, the d cyclotomic polynomial. And of course, the, the cyclotomic polynomial divides uh, q to the power of d minus 1, where d is any divisor of n. Right, so uh, we've got this subgroup embedded into the, into the full field. Right, so uh, this is our important definition, cyclotomic subgroups. That's what we're talking about. That's the context. That's the setting. Right, so we use the notation G subscript phi to the n q to indicate the, uh, the cyclotomic uh, subgroup embedded in the, in the extension field. Right, and uh, uh, phi to the subscript n q is the order of, a, of the generator alpha. So alpha to the power of phi n q is equal to 1. Right, and, that, and phi n q, of course, phi n is irreducible, so it can, it can be a prime number. Right, so we've got prime order groups. We're in a setting where we can do crypto. We can do El Gamal. We can do all those nice algorithms. Right, so that's the setting. Why don't we do crypto in there? Right, and one question that arises is, can one square elements in this cyclotomic subgroup faster than one can square general elements? Right, and that's the question that we're going to answer. And we're going to answer it positively. Now, right. what's motivating all this? Why are, we, why are we looking into this? Well, the motivation is, as my earlier remarks might have indicated, our interest in pairing-based cryptography. 
right? Pairing based cryptography requires an efficiently computable non degenerate bilinear pairing. And you've all seen this notation, uh, I'm sure, before. Uh, the, the pairing itself is protected by a bodyguard of hard problems, right? And it's important that they all be, uh, all those bodyguards be up to the job, right? So we've got to have hard discrete logarithm problems in terms of G1, G2, and the target group GT, right? And of course, we also need to be able to calculate the pairing efficiently, right? That's very important. I notice every time that it, it's it quite common for other cryptographers when they mention the word pairing to put the adjective costly in front of it, right? Which is, I suppose, a lot of us are trying to put a lot of work into uh, certainly uh, not exactly removing that adjective, but at least kind of uh, playing it down a little bit because pairings are expensive, all right? I mean, it's always going to be more expensive than a point multiplication on the elliptic curve. But really, well, a lot of workers have been working hard, and the, the cost of the pairing has been, uh, has been incrementally driven down by the, the work of lots of people, right? But anyway, we need it to be efficient. So uh, what pairing? As you know, there's lots of pairings. This is where things could potentially get out of hand in terms of getting confusing. There's the VEI pairing, there's the T8 pairing, there's the eight pairing, there's the rate pairing. Here's one, uh, perhaps the most common uh, type of pairing uh, out of which... Uh, the fastest pairings are all derived, and this is a, the Tate pairing, right? So we see the Tate pairing takes the, the uh, uh, elements, parameters from G1 and G2 to produce an rth root of unity uh, as the output. Now, what about the uh, security level? Well, we've got to make sure the security level balances up at all levels. So the security levels we're traditionally interested in are the, the equivalent to AES 80-bit, 128-bit, 192-bit, and 256-bit. Right? To achieve that, our group size has got to be basically twice that to protect us from square root attacks. So it's got to be 160, 256, 384, 512. Right? However, uh, the pairing evaluates as an element in the extension field, and here we're vulnerable to index calculus attacks. So here we need to ramp up the, the size of p to the power of k uh, appropriately right? to maintain the appropriate level of security. And as we know, uh, at 80 bits, 1,024 bits is regarded as approximately the right level. And uh, that, uh, those numbers increase quite rapidly because of the efficiency of index calculus methods uh, uh, as we go to higher levels of security. So what does this imply for the pairing? Well, it has immediate Im implications for the appropriate optimum choice of the embedding degree K. Right? So the, the K value should basically be the... Uh, the, 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 like 1,024 divided by 160 is approximately 6, right? 3,072 divided by 256 is 12, right? So this suggests the kind of embedding degree that we should be using. The, the, the water is muddied a little by this row parameter, which uh, depends on a particular pairing-friendly curve that we're using. We would like row to be equal to 1. Or sometimes we actually get that, for example, with BN curves. Uh, with k equals 12. Other times, though, we come reasonably close to rho being equal to 1. So that's not a huge issue. So the kind of embedding degrees we were looking at would be k equals 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. These seem to be good values to give us the full spread uh, across all levels of security. Now, you may notice uh, there's a particular choice of values of k there. They're all divisible by, uh, by 6. Right? So let me kind of maybe justify that a little bit. If the embedding degree is divisible by 2, we can use the quadratic twist to represent points, elements in G2. Now, we've got these groups, G1, G2, and GT. It's important that we try and keep those group sizes as small as possible. Now, we can keep G1 small by doing that over the base field. Right? To keep G2 small with type 3 pairings is a little bit more problematical. Right? And what can help us here is if we use uh, curves with the maximum available twist. Right? So if k is equal to 2, we can always use the quadratic twist. Right? That means g2 is half the size it would otherwise have to be. But there are other uh, situations where we can do even better. It turns out that pairing-friendly curves often have a very small CM discriminant, right? typically 1 or 3. And under these circumstances, if k is divisible by 4 or divisible by 6, we can use either the quartic twist for g2 or the sextic twist for g2. Right? Now, just to give you an indication as to what the advantage of that is, G2 could be, uh, sorry, the, the extension field K could be equal to 36, right? So that's a 36 extension that we need to do some arithmetic in. We'd, we'd rather not be handling G2 over that full extension. And we don't have to. By putting it on the sextic twist, 36 divided by 6 is 6. G2 could be represented over just a sextic extension, which is a much smaller value to be moving around, to be doing arithmetic with. So the advantages are fairly obvious. 
Other advantages of these particular values of K? Well, compression. We can compress the output size of the pairing, right? And for uh, two divides K, we can compress by a factor of two. For four divides K, we can again compress by a factor of two. But if six divides K, we can do that a little bit better, and we can compress by a factor of three, which is good. And uh, finally, uh, what about uh, calculations in GT? Well, if 2 divides k, we've got a fast squaring method that we, I, I'll describe in a minute. If 4 divides k, we've also got a fast method. But this is where we're going to concentrate down here. This optimal case, really, where 6 divides k, and here we, we're going to give some very fast formula for uh, doing squarings in, in the group GT. Right, so that contextualizes what we're trying to do. Okay, let's move to our main results. Well, let's first of all restrict Q equals 1 mod 6. Right, and this, uh, typically, uh, we're working over uh, a prime characteristic field. And uh, if this is going to be a pairing-friendly curve, in fact, Q must be 1 mod 6. So this is the setting that arises in the context of pairings. Right? So here we've got the, 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 the cyclotomic subgroup that we're interested in. And we're going to present a method to, to do the squaring twice as fast as uh, that for squaring the general element over the, over the, full, over the full field. Right, and as we see, we get some nice results. And why is, is the result significant? Well, it, it applies in particular to one of the important parts of the, the calculation in the pairing. The pairing, you may be aware, has the Miller loop and the final exponentiation. This optimization that we're going to show you applies directly to the, 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 the final poverty, right, the final exponentiation, and gives us a nice speed up in that setting. It also applies to post-pairing arithmetic, when you're doing further arithmetic on the, on the value of the pairing, and also applies to torus-based crypto. And it also arises in the context of some draft standards that are coming out. Now, Koblenz and Menezes simplified things for us all by introducing the concept of a pairing-friendly field, right? a particularly simple field in which to operate. Right? And in this pairing-friendly field, the restriction is that P should be congruent to 1 mod 12, which is a little over-restrictive. In our paper, we, we go on at some length about this in the full paper. And we're going to restrict ourselves to K being... Uh, uh, factors having only factors of 2 or 3, right? So K is restricted to 2 to the A times 3 to the B for A greater than or equal to 1 and B greater than or equal to 0, right? Then that's what uh, Kublis and Menezes refer to as a pairing-friendly field, a PFF, right? And in this setting, well, we get a nice, a simple binomial, irreducible polynomial to work over. And we also have this uh, nice, simple way of writing down the, the cyclotomic polynomial, right? This identity is, is clearly true. Right, and uh, a little bit of uh, look, staring at this for long enough, you see this nice condition at the bottom here. Uh, can, I, can I wiggle around and point at it? Uh, I can. Right. See this nice relationship down here, which shows us that uh, we only really need to deal with uh, the, 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 the sixth extension, because that, that covers all cases for all values of k. Right, so that's a simplifier. Now, uh, Let's look, first of all, at uh, the, the quadratic extension field, the simple case possible, the quadratic extension field. In fact, all the main results are in, in already, and work's already been done by others in this regard. So we're just kind of warming you up with, uh, with this uh, description. Right? If you've got an element uh, in this uh, quadratic extension field, let's consider squaring a general element. Right? And the element we'll write as a plus bx. And for those of you who, well, it's basically like complex arithmetic is perhaps the way to think about it. Right, because this relationship is well known uh, to even people in, in, in secondary schools. Right, so we want to calculate uh, alpha squared. Well, we just square it in, in the normal way. And, of course, x squared is equal to i. Right, so we can do a substitution over there. And we end up with the, this equation for the, uh, for the product. Right, and when we calculate its cost, we see its cost is two multiplications. Right, one multiplication here and one multiplication whoops, of a times b. Right, and you'll notice if i is minus 1, that term actually disappears, the term I'm currently pointing at. So we get a nice simple relationship. Overall cost, two multiplications, 2m. Right? right, now let's assume that alpha isn't just a general element, it's an element of the, of the, the second cyclotomic subgroup. Right? In which case, we know that alpha to the power of q plus 1 equals 1, because q plus 1 is the second cyclotomic polynomial. Right? Which we can rewrite as alpha to the q times alpha equals 1, and with a little bit of elementary uh, manipulation here, we can see that alpha to the Q, using the, the Frobenius, is basically uh, the conjugate of alpha. Right? So alpha to the Q is the conjugate of alpha. 
right? So therefore, uh, uh, exploiting that, we get alpha times its conjugate is equal to 1. And multiplying that out, we see that a squared minus ib squared equals 1. So interestingly, in this cyclotomic subgroup, a and b, a and b are not independent of one another. They're tied to one another. We've got this extra constraint, which basically ties a to b, as in this relationship, a squared minus ib squared equals 1. Now, we can exploit that immediately, plug it back into our squaring formula, and as pointed out uh, by Stam and Lenstra in a paper uh, 2002 or 2003, I'm not sure, we get this identity here. And now you can see the cost has been reduced to two squarings, one squaring there and one squaring there. So we've gone from two multiplications to two squarings, right? And this is, uh, as I say, the, the observation first of, of Stam and Lenstra. Right? Now, that's an improvement, right? Two multiplications to two squared. Now, if we're just working over the quadratic extension, you might say, nah, the improvement isn't great because the difference between a multiplication and a squaring over the base field, often the factor is quoted as 0 0.85 or something like that. However, this improvement has much greater implications when it's at the top of the deep tower of extensions, right? So, for example, if you're doing a multiplication, uh, sorry, a squaring on the, the 36th extension field, Right? You can actually do that with just two squarings on the 18th extension. 36 divided by 2 is 18. Right? And that, that optimization then ripples right down through the tower, and the improvement becomes actually quite significant. So this is important in Perrion-based crypto, where we use large extension degrees. Right? Again, we can simplify if i is equal to uh, uh, 1. Okay, so that's Stam and Leinster from uh, uh, 2003. Uh, and, of course, you can also use their method since uh, a sixth extension is two times three. It can be used in that context as well. Uh, and and, and Stam and Lenster also, I mean, to, to, they were working very much in the context. They were very interested in, at the time in the XTR crypto system, right? So they were very interested in the, in the sixth extension, right, specifically, right? And uh, they obtained a further, a very nice result where they could uh, do a, a squaring uh, very quickly over the... the, uh, the uh, the, the cyclotomic uh, field, right? But unfortunately, perhaps because of their work thinking in the context of XTR, they had this restriction to Q is equal to 2 or 5 mod 9, and in the pairing friendly context, that doesn't cover our case, which Q is equal to 1 mod 3, right? So also uh, another group had a go at this problem, uh, Granger, Page, and Smart, and they obtained some formula, but it turns out they're not quite as good as ours, right? So that's, this is where, where we come in, right? Prior methods have used equations in subfields FQ and FQ cubed, but not in FQ squared. And this is where we got lucky, and we, we got in there and got a nice result. Okay, now let's look at the representation of the, the sixth extension, right? And there's one way of representing it, fairly obviously. And there's a couple of ways of looking at that. You can look at it as a cubic extension of a quadratic or a quadratic extension of a cubic. You can have a 3 over 2 tower or a 2 over 3 tower, right? So we, te we actually are going to look at it in terms of a, a 3 over 2 tower, in which case uh, we can represent elements like this. Right? So let's go ahead and just do a squaring on that. And if we do a squaring, we end up with this, which ends up with this. Right? So there's the, the effect of squaring a plus bx plus c square, x squared for small a, b, and c. And here's the squaring value, capital A, capital B, capital C. And the total amount of work, you can add it up. One squaring, two squarings, three squarings, one multiplication, two multiplication, three multiplication, three multiplications, and three squarings. Right? Not bad, but no, no prize, really. Uh, it turns out that Chung and Hassan came and looked at this again, and they came up with a, a better way of doing it, which just requires four squarings and one multiplication. But we're going to do even better still. Right? Basically, we're going to make use of the extra condition that applies to elements in the cyclotomic subfield, and there you can see it at the top. We've got this extra condition, right? And this is what we're going to exploit, right? So we exploit this, uh, whoops, in a, a fairly elementary way. They, from here, the, the, the development was actually quite, was quite fun. It was quite enjoyable, all quite elementary stuff, right? We, we do a, a, an expansion. We do a, a comparison with both sides, and we end up with this nice condition here. This is how this constraint eventually works its way out. And you can see now b times c must be equal to a squared minus a bar. So I can represent this product in terms of this square, which I've calculated already. Right? So you can see where this is going, and you can see how this is going to work. So doing a simple solution, simple manipulation, we end up with values for b, c, a, b, and a, c. Substituting them back into our original squaring formula, we end up with our, our result. 
right? And here you can see it here. These rather beautiful equations, I think you may or may not agree, uh, right? They have a nice elementary uh, shape to them. And three squareings, right? Three squareings, right? So that, that's pretty good. This is in a, in a cubic extension over a quadratic, right? So we're multiplying, we're squaring rather, in a cubic extension, and we get away with just three Three squarings. That's almost linear, which is probably the best that you can do. Most often, when you do a multiplication, you things get go quadratic. But here, it, it's virtually linear. And you can see these are very practical formula, in that they actually and there's very little extra work above and beyond the squarings. Right? Okay, we've got to multiply by two. That's an addition. Multiply by three. That's two additions. We got a subtraction. Right? But the other overhead, which in some settings, some other context, uh, a better formula as ontologically might turn out to be not as good in practice. These are actually good practical equations that give us a good practical speed up. Right. So there, uh, well that's just another way of looking at it. So let's come down to operation counts. This is the uh, Stam and Lenstra, uh, and we're only using their, uh, their quadratic extension idea. If you do that, let's look at an embedding degree of k equals 24. It comes in at 72m. We come in at a, at a cost of 54m, which is rather better. Uh, and over here, uh, the, using the, uh, the Granger page and smart solution, uh, it's even more expensive, right? So, not surprisingly, with these simple, elegant, rather nice formula, we do rather better. Okay, let's talk about BN curves, right, which are probably the most popular type of uh, peri-friendly curve. Well, there's the equations from them to parameterize them. Uh, so... We can obviously use our construction because the embedding degree is 12, so that's a sextic extension over the quadratic FP squared, right? And that's clearly a good way of going about it. And if we do it and implement it and use this formula, we notice that the cost of the final exponentiation goes down from nearly 6,000 M to approximately 48,000 M, right? An improvement of more than 20%, right? So there's the, and the final exponentiation is about half the overall calculation time of the pairing. So overall pairings are suddenly got 10% faster, right? And we were delighted to see that uh, Nairig and his co-workers recently sent a record for the calculation of pairing of BN curves and that they used our new formula as part of their optimizations, right? So I think that justifies what we've done. This is torus-based cryptography which I know is a, a, a type of cryptography very close to Rob Granger's heart. Uh, actually, when I saw this slide, I thought TBC meant to be continued. So that can, shows how much I know about torus-based cryptography. Right, actually very little. But uh, Rob assures me that these equations have, have application here as well. Okay. Uh, we looked at various extensions of the idea. Can, can we take these nice formulas to higher powerings? Uh, uh, well, we had a look, but nothing nice came out, basically. So there, anyway, to summarize, basically our method provides the fastest available squaring in the, uh, in the cyclotomic subgroup and for pairing-based crypto fields, right? It's conceptually simple and from its generalization, right? It's highly applicable, uh, so it's immediately useful. Uh, it's ideal for torus-based cryptography, and uh, it looks like it'll slot nicely into the, uh, the developing standards for pairing-based cryptography. I guess that's the end. That is the end. Thank you.